Hello, Roadrunner fans. This is Brian Rowan, Executive Director of Athletics here at RCGC. Joined on In the Chaparral by Gus Ostrom. Welcome back to the show, Gus. Glad to be here. Hey, some great things going on in Roadrunner Athletics. Uh, winter sports are in full swing. Uh, we're going to talk about them in a minute. Uh, one of the things we started last year, which I thought was great, was we had a uh, Athletes of the Season. Uh, we just crowned our fall athletes of the season. We wanted to give them a shout out, talk about them a little bit, because just last week we had our uh, fall sports awards dinner. went great. Right. Uh, it was awesome to see those athletes. So much fun. Uh, we want to thank Alvin Gay, who was our MC, made it a great night for us. All the coaches did a great job. And at the end of the night, I get the great honor to uh, announce after the voting is done who our male and female athletes of the season are. This year we had a, 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 on the women's side, we had a, our first time having a repeat winner. Right. Uh, and, and coming back for the second year in a row was Megan Lord was our fall uh, student athlete of the season. Yeah, Megan had, uh, you know, a, another great fall. And it's not a surprise that it's a repeat, by the way, in, in my opinion. Uh, she won a lot of different awards this year, um, you know, won the CAANJ you know, female athlete of the year. We went to a nice banquet for that up in North Jersey recently. Um, she performed incredibly well, led the Roadrunners to the playoffs again, uh, pretty much one of the leading scorers on the team, made the all-region, you know, team. And, of course, as a freshman, uh, she was the Region 19 player of the year. So she, uh, you know, very, very consistent both years, hard worker, um, just a, a, a great young lady and um, not surprised and, the right choice. Great two-year career for her, right. and, uh, and 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 top it all off. That 4.0 GPA stands out. Absolutely, uh, super, super balance in the in the work, uh, sports, uh, life skills area. You know, and, and really right. proud of her. We had her on our RCGCW segment where she talked about how she builds her schedule and how she does those things. And uh, many of our student athletes could learn something from how she's done so well. Yeah, exactly. And I'll tell you, um, you know, she really took on a leadership role this year. Last year's team with the women's soccer was, uh, you know, uh, had a lot of uh, second-year players on it and Meg, when Megan was a uh, first-year player. And she stepped into that role this year and did you know, very, very well, continued her – you know her amazing scoring skills and you know her offensive skills out there but she took on that leadership role and they had a great season yeah absolutely uh really strong season again for women's soccer on the men's side uh gentlemen that started uh, like likes to start the cross country season a little mm -hmm. bit slower claims he doesn't like the heat as much uh but finished so so strong our male uh student athlete of the season was mike dowd yeah, Mike had a uh, fan, uh, finished up the season in, in fantastic fashion, so to speak. You know, uh, second in the in the nation. Yeah. Okay, all what American great, for the second year. Uh, just an amazing uh, race, and he he had some really rough competition there too. And, and he just had an amazing race. Uh, Mike was uh, you know all region uh, you know again for two years in a row, region 19 champion again this year. Uh, he he just had a phenomenal season. He's um, you know he told me that he. Um, when he first came to the uh, you know RCGC program, he needed to make a lot of adjustments, especially in his work habits, you know. And um, you know he really did. He made a lot of adjustments, and this year it showed quite a bit. Even though he had a good freshman year, right? This year really oh, yeah. his times was, went down quite a bit, you know. And he did incredibly well. He's going to continue his education. Uh, he wants uh, at Wilmington University. He wants to uh, you know go into business administration, maybe be a financial advisor one day. So he's doing very well on the academic side and. And, uh, of course, we still have a track season that's to go. That's right, that's right. Uh, he talked about uh, winning that national championship quite a, quite a bit last year, and he played a key role in it, you know, too. So he's looking for, uh, looking for that repeat. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And it, it was great. You know, the cross-country team meets right outside my, my office door on a daily basis before they practice. Right. And, uh, and then they come back in there. And Mike, just an extremely hard worker. Yeah. You know, he, he put in those miles, and I know that as they increased their mileage throughout the year, he, he was really grinding right. and putting his body through torture on a daily basis in order to get that, that great finish. And in cross country, you know, you can, have a, you can have a great year, but if you have one bad race, you're not an All-American. Right. Uh, so that, that pressure's really on in a sport like that, in track and tennis, where the All-American status is just determined on that national championship. So yeah, you get into he's, one. A, he's obviously a clutch guy. Came through for us in track and field last year. And then, you know, to finish second in that cross-country race. Yeah, that's he's, clutch. And he's mentioned several times to me, you know, all the courses are different. It's just like you just basically pointed out, you could have one bad race very easily, you know. Um, but, I, again, he um, he kind of did a little study of things on the different courses ahead of time. He knew what to expect. He had been to some of them before, of course. And, uh, 
but he he was clutch, like you said. Hey, uh, great stuff. Uh, we're really proud of those two male and female athletes. Right. Look, look on our website. Gus has put together nice profiles on each of them, uh, so that's great stuff. Uh, one of the reasons we, we talk, look back, this show obviously looks forward. It's just a little bit of a slow week. we got Thanksgiving holiday in there, uh, so the wrestling team is off next week on the weekend. We've only got one big uh, basketball event, but it is a big one. Uh, whenever we play our crosstown rivals or cross-county rivals uh, at Camden or Cumberland, you know, you, you want to see who's ahead in every single right. one of those sports. And we've been ahead, uh, of, of course, on those programs uh, a lot. And we want to stay that way. Tuesday, we travel to Camden County. Women's basketball is a 5 p.m. tip-off. Men's basketball is 7 p.m. tip-off. Both of our teams look good. Uh, but it's obviously a test when you get into the conference play and region play. Gus, uh, let's start with the women's side. Coach right. Cooper has the team now to a 500 record. They played two really good teams early on, took two losses, now 2-0 and in the region and, and headed for hopefully a third one. Yeah, and they've won three in a row. Uh, you know, they had a little bit of a tough start because they were playing some incredible national competition there. But uh, they've rebounded very well, three in a row. Uh, and and I, you know, I think that this is going to continue. This is the type of cycle they went into last year where they had a long winning streak. I don't want to jinx them too That's much right. here. But, no, they have some very solid players, you know, um, you know, on the uh, uh, on the team, some really good shooters out there. Uh, Niana Sobs having a very good year. Uh, great start, at least. A, a great yeah. start, yeah. And and several other players are going to contribute. They're just kind of getting uh, warmed up, I think. And uh, you know, Camden County's a big rivalry coming up for them. Obviously, it always is. Uh, you know, on on uh, the twentieth, and um, they're they're ready for it. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And uh, Tierra Bush obviously is is off to a good start. Player to watch for me in the Camden game, uh, Yasmin Trueblood. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've seen her in practice, really a, really a hard worker. I love what I see from her. I think she's a skilled uh, inside player, and uh, I think she could be read, looking for a breakout game. Yeah, I think she, uh, she's she been improving every game, you know, from what I've seen. And, and, and the play of their guards have, you know, have been improving as well. So I, I just think it gets better from here, to be honest with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. turn it over, 7 o'clock, nightcap. Uh, we'll be over there, I'm sure, you and I, taking a look at the games. We'll have try to do some coverage on our Instagram story. If you're not following us on Instagram, it's at RCGC Athletics. Um, men's game, always a big game. Coach Lou over there at Camden. Uh, great person, has been in yeah. South Jersey basketball for a long time. They say he can keep any game close. Yeah. Uh, always difficult to play against Coach Lou. He does a great job. Uh, I think our coach probably is doing a great job on the preparation side and now has some extra time to get ready for that one, though. Yeah. Um, well, you mentioned about Coach Lou. He is a tough opponent tough <laughs> so it's always going to be a great game and the rivalry is a natural one anyway uh you know on our end uh we have we have three or four players who have just been playing out of the universe jazeera noel in, in particular you know he's averaging about 28 points per game we had a graphic up on our uh you know twitter page uh, recently and i'm just looking at these stats and and you know it's just double, unbelievable double did your rebounds 28 points per game that's a heck of a start yeah he's had the double doubles in every game and uh, he came out of woodbury high school he was a south jersey times player of the year i thought it might take him a few games to get settled in you know it's a college you know uh, level type of play but i'll tell you what he has started off strong i hope he continues that way he's a great player uh, a couple of other guys have you know played well uh naquan mcpherson of course has continues mm -hmm. to shoot well and just play an all-around good game and and uh, tyler lunsford's had a good you know season so far and and you know several others as well so i think uh, coach wareham has gotten them off to a great start uh this team is a young, when I say young, they're not really young they, because there are some second year players uh, that Coach Wareham had had, uh, had before, but he, um, this group has been together. Most of the players have not been together, right. you know, for a while. So they're just getting to know each other and you can see what they're doing so far. And it's, again, it's just going to get better as they continue to, you know, to get to know each other on the court. So big, so. big double header for us. It's really the only action we have next week. So look for a lot of coverage. Uh, from us, a uh, preview on our website, a lot of coverage on social media, and it's close, so we'll have a lot of our staff there cheering on the Roadrunners. Hey, thanks again for coming on the show, Gus. Hopefully fans will tune in and, and follow us on the website. we got those features on our fall athletes of the season uh, and a lot coming up on our matchup against Camden. Also coverage of last weekend's uh, wrestling duels at uh, McDaniel College. Thanks for coming on, Gus. Yeah. Go Roadrunners. Yeah. Go Roadrunners.